Let's take a look at the alternative coin Ethereum from this week's article on Brave New Coin. So we'll start with some boring stuff that more people should pay attention to because it leads to the exciting stuff that everyone's paying attention to price. Ethereum for the moment is a proof of work network, which means they have a hash rate and difficulty where anybody can add or subtract hash rate of varying efficiencies, depending on their electricity cost, overhead, hardware accessibility, that sort of thing. And something interesting has happened with Ethereum's hash rate in that it has increased basically to the previous all-time high levels. When you see this happening, there's always an underlying factor. When something goes from extremely non, not profitable to mine, like Ethereum did, to extremely profitable is clearly one of the influencing factors. It's either price, it's either a lack of efficient miners, and you are more efficient as a miner. So you basically hog more of the hash rate. Fees, in this case, play the biggest role. Ethereum fees are incredibly high historically. They dwarfed even Bitcoin's fees in a few days, uh, or continue to dwarf Bitcoin's fees overall. Just a lot of poorly scaled on-chain activity is really what it comes down to. I mean, nobody wants to pay $150 for a transaction. I don't care who you are. <laughs> you know, if you're interacting with smart contracts on Ethereum right now, that's the fees you're paying. So we're looking at that sort of stuff for hash rate and difficulty here. And the market has responded and said, if my hash rate is net profitable, I'm going to keep adding it, right? And we'll see this with Bitcoin as well. If price keeps going up, the overall profitability of mining is going to keep increasing because if your reward is in an appreciating asset, then profitability increases. It's that simple. So this ETH hash rate could keep increasing even though inflation is at an all-time low because fees are so high. If we look at, and, and price is increasing, obviously, but price you know, price for Ethereum in 2018, 2017, much different than what it is today. So if price triples from here, hash rate's going to explode. Another thing to mention is with the ETH 2.0 transition, which is not for many months, if not years away, as far as the full transition, it will purposefully kick all of the proof of work people off the chain. It, it's going to transition to proof of stake. The early stages of that will probably begin... November, December, January, February, sometime in that time frame, we'll see like phase zero of ETH 2.0. Testnet is currently active, I believe. But until then, if price keeps increasing, fees remain high, hash rate will continue to increase. I am kind of surprised that there aren't more miners making ASICs. Um, I think it's, I guess it's difficult as an ASIC producer to sort of time the market correctly if you know you are going to be bricked sooner rather than later in that all of these are just going to be kicked off ETH, uh, the ETH algorithm, probably within the next two years, I'd imagine. Uh, but you can just, you can see how profitable this stuff is at the top end, just insane profitability. If you think about this at scale, you know, if you've got 10,000 of these miners and your electricity costs are four cents a day or less, you're making lots of money, right? I don't know what the typical ETH farm scale is or at hash farm scale, but you know, you could make this work, right? <laughs> like if you have the money and the know with know with all, wherewithal, whatever, to figure that out, extremely profitable right now. If you look at block counts, block counts are at an all-time high. Block times are at an all-time low. Uh, inflation near an all-time low, not quite an all-time low. Uh, basically before the last ice age, that was the all-time low in the inflation rate, somewhere below 4%. Right now it's somewhere above 4%. It's important to look at the inflation rate because if you look at the other metrics, you think to yourself, wow, this stuff just has to be insanely bullish, right? We have ETH ICO treasuries dwindling to nothing. We have DeFi lockup increasing substantially. So supply is being sucked into some other vehicle. But we still have this 4% inflation. It's decently high, honestly. It's decently high. It's, not, it's higher than Monero. It's higher than BTC. Doesn't mean it won't perform well price-wise in the near term. But over a long period of time, you know, that's an important consideration. We went from 8% to 4% not too long ago. So there's still a lot of circulating ETH. You know, I'm going to show some charts that show like 10 million locked in DeFi, whether or not some of that's double counted, which it is, whatever, but it's important to consider that when you're like, why isn't this more bullish than it is, right? Why aren't we at the previous price level in 2017, 2018? One of the considerations is inflation. If we look at what's causing most or much of the transaction fee rise. It's two things. It's basically Uniswap and ETH 
ERC-20 USDT, ERC-20 Tether. If we compare that to Omni, the original Tether chain, you can see it's basically dwindled to nothing. It wouldn't, it wouldn't surprise me if it was eventually just removed completely. They still have around 5,000 transactions a day, but uh, yeah, ERC-20 USDT is over 250,000 transactions per day. Now it's over 20% of the total transactions on ETH. The recent spike may be related to the OKEX transaction off the uh, exchange issues. If if there's a vehicle you can use to get your coins off the exchange and it, and it might be Ethereum, I'm not exactly sure the situation right now, but that could be a big part of this. But undeniably, Tether's playing a large role in uh, what's going on with Ethereum right now. If you look at the total node size for a full node, which includes all the history of everything that's ever happened on Ethereum, it is approaching 5.5 terabytes. This becomes a centralization issue as full nodes get bigger and bigger, more cumbersome hardware re requirements. Bitcoin's full node is around 400 gigabytes. Uh, EOS is basically unknown. Ripple is kind of unknown as far as sizes. Number of people running full nodes is unknown on Ethereum, Ripple, and EOS. It's relatively few, mostly cloud mining services or, or cloud services rather. So there's all sorts of decentralization issues with this. And we can talk about partitioning and sharding. Uh, but at the end of the day, if you don't have a full history of the chain, you can run into problems in the future where you're trying to pull up balances or transactions and you're relying on a select few ledgers that have that history. Transactions per day on ETH have been climbing recently, probably due to Ethereum. Big part of that is Ethereum. Obviously, the price is going to play a role there. Transaction fees are actually way down, but still at a mega, mega, inordinary, unordinary uh, high historically. I mean, they are, we saw peaks to like three, four bucks in, in 2018. This peaked out to like 10 bucks on average. And like I said, I have personally had transactions this week that are still in the 150 USD uh, range for costs. So fees are still incredibly high relative to where they've been historically. As much as that's painful, it says that people are using the chain. It says that scalability is poor, which it is. But those are good problems to have. You don't want to die in the dark as a chain. You want people using the blockchain, obviously. It says there's a use case here, right? It says there's something going on. DeFi, DEXs, Tether, all of it together, whatever. It doesn't matter what it is. There's clearly, despite the fees, people are still using it, right? They haven't moved to EOS. They haven't moved to Tezos. They haven't migrated anywhere else. They're still using Ethereum. And another way to look at scalability and the size of like available block space for transactions is for Ethereum is to look at the gas limit. So gas limits can be raised by miners. Increasing the limits causes strain on the chain. So miners can say, yeah, we'll just increase the limits, right? But if this causes bigger issues, which it can down the line, then they're, then the whole thing just kind of collapses under its own weight. Uh, so this speaks again to the need for scalability now, not later. <laughs> Because every time they increase this limit, it just keeps hitting the ceiling, right? So clearly a lot of people are using Ethereum still. A lot of DAP transactions, that sort of thing. NVT has drifted way down, which is incredibly bullish. Active addresses basically returning to previous all-time highs above or around 600,000. All of this looks incredibly bullish, which is why over the past week, it didn't really make sense that price hasn't reacted. If... If active addresses are rising and on-chain activity is popping off, price has to react to that because you can't you can't use Ethereum without using without buying Ethereum for fees, without on-ramping to Ethereum to use the DEXs. Like it's all hand in hand. So NVT decreasing bullish, active addresses increasing bullish. Uh, it's exactly what we want to see if you want price to go up. Looking at the ICO treasuries, they've continued to decline now below one million from five at least the known treasuries. At this point, it's probably safe to say that the overall supply glut with the treasuries is a non-concern. You can see as price increased, uh, Q2, Q3, the selling sort of decreased, which makes sense from a USD perspective. If you're a company with X amount of runway, you just need, if you need, you need less Ethereum to sell. You need to sell less Ethereum to cover that cost, right? If price keeps going up. So as opposed to 
ICOs that were occurring and then treasuries just being immediately turned into USD or slowly being turned into USD at this point, it's probably reached some sort of equilibrium where if price keeps going up, you're going to see selling out of treasuries, but at the, it's not going to really matter, I don't think, in the grand scheme of things. Uh, looking at dApps, Uniswap clearly just dominating everything. Users over the past 30 days, massive volume, just 10x the next thing down. I mean, it's just insane what's going on with Uniswap right now. <laughs> big part of the fees not only but the thing is it's not just uniswap collectively the the uh, total volume on all of this stuff is astronomical but compared to where it was a few months ago obviously a few years ago it's just completely changing the game in a DeFi perspective now all of this like is it a net benefit for society you know like is, is there a massive non-gambling purpose use case here no all of this stuff is gambling all of this is leverage related it's all you know it's all the same stuff so it's not like we're going to win the uh, nobel peace prize here but ETH has clearly found a gambling regulatory regulatory arbitrage use case just as it did with icos and that should continue as long as world governments don't clamp down on this stuff which probably will happen eventually but hasn't happened yet if we look at ETH locked in DeFi, over 9 million now some of this is double counted or triple counted because it's on multiple contracts in the system. But as long as this keeps going up, it's locking up inflation, it's locking up ETH that could be sold. It's being levered up in several several different ways. This could also be shorts as well, uh, selling pressure in a leveraged manner. But if you're locking up ETH, you are automatically long ETH because unless it's hedged, it's just still sitting there, right? It's not you can't move it to USD or some other coin unless you trade it as such. So that's obviously bullish. If you look at ETH, Google Trends still quite low. Hasn't really increased yet. I suspect if ETH starts to break above 500, uh, the Google Trends will react to that. You'll see a lot more articles, a lot more people talking about ETH. You'll see a lot of articles on ETH coming into ETH 2.0 in November, December, January, February that sort of stuff. So I expect Google Google Trends should increase sooner rather than later. If you look at DeFi, crypto Google Trends and yield farming Google Trends, both are down from previous weeks. No surprise there. Uh, as you, if you look at the volumes on this stuff, it's, it's decreased a little bit. Kind of the mania has subsided. The APR, APYs have subsided slightly. So no surprises there. If we look at technicals, uh, 5,200 EMA yearly pivots, VPVR volume, RSI, Bitfinex long shorts. Bitfinex long shorts are continuing to increase at all time highs here. Obviously, this is great if price is increasing, just like DeFi lockup. This is a massive long squeeze, though, in the making. If price decides to take a swift turn south and some of these longs start to get nervous, it's going to push price lower. And then the more of those longs are going to get nervous, pr pushing price lower. You know, it's just going to keep going and going and going. The good thing is that most of these longs are actually way down low at like 200, 250. No need or concern to close them at this point. Upside resistance sits at around 450. Previous local high, yearly pivot, VPVR notch here. Tons of support on the low side. Tons of support at 270. Tons of support at 200. Yearly pivot, volume profile, and then insane amount of support volume wise at 150 so to, to think that we're going to see sub 200 in the near term is silly to think we're going to coast at sub 200 in the near term is silly tons of uh buying demand here volumes haven't really picked up yet on bifinex but that's another thing to watch for as we break 450 500 that sort of thing looking at the pitchfork three points defining a rate of change the yellow line here is the median line is where price wants to live most of the time up in this region would be overbought. Down here would be oversold. Doesn't mean it can't tap those regions. Sit there for a few days, weeks, that sort of thing. Upside here is substantial. I mean, we're talking 750 plus. If this uh, continues even through 2021, uh, Q1 has actually been, Q1, Q2 have been ETH's best quarters. Q4 has been ETH's worst quarter historically. So this may coincide with uh, the ETH 2.0 stuff coming into Q1. Not necessarily from a massively bullish perspective, but a speculative perspective. There's going to be a lot of speculators coming, stepping in, I think. The other part about the ETH 2.0 stuff is that the proof of stake side of things will also lock up supply 
beyond the DeFi stuff. So we're going to see more ETH locked up, which should be bullish for the price because if demand is the same or increasing and supply decreases, price goes up. That's just how it is, right? So that looks great from a bullish perspective. Uh, cloud today, we popped above the key June, above the cloud substantially. All of this speaks to strong bullish continuation above uh, 450, 500, whatever the local high is here. This definitely looks really, really bullish just as BTC does. Uh, ETH BTC to me is untradeable because both ETH and BTC are bullish here. Both should continue to be bullish for the next couple of weeks. The problem with trading ETH BTC is you don't necessarily, to me, I don't have an edge to know when one will outperform the other. Obviously, if one moves and the other doesn't, you can say, all right, ETH is lagging here. It's probably going to move next, which was the case today. So I think you can trade ETH BTC profitably on low time frames, but at this point in high time frames, I just it's it I'm not going to try to trade it because it's just too hard. Obviously, if we look at VP, VPVR yearly pivots, 5200, all this stuff looks bullish. Like it wants to go back to 05 eventually. Uh, the trajectory to get there is going to be a mess. Um, just looking at this past few months, it's also been a mess, right? It's just all over the place. So I just think the better trades are on ETH USD and BTC USD, they're just easier, more straightforward, less uh, paying attention to. Uh, I do think ETH, ETH may outperform BTC over the next six months, but to try to predict when that's going to happen and how it's going to happen is just incredibly difficult, I think. So overall, ETH um, for an altcoin is looking quite strong, should follow with BTC, should be bullish for lots of DeFi stuff as well. We're seeing lo supply lockup increasing currently we're seeing supply lockup coming eventually with eth 2.0 technicals are on the right side of all of the trend metrics for bullish continuation so i like 750 plus within the next six months for eth 